cliffcentral.com. We are ready for episode three of the Next Generation Section 12J discussion. You will remember that this is the third edition in our series with Grovest, which is all about filling you in on more of the information that you might want to know about Section 12J. Now, we kick things off with a conversation with the CEO of Grovest, Jeff Miller, to teach you more about Section 12J and the Income Tax uh, which, the Income Tax Act, rather, 58 of 1962. And last month, we heard from Jeff again to discuss why it's better to invest in a Section 12J instead of taking your money offshore. Now, to remind you, in case you've missed any of this, Section 12J was legislated by the South African government to encourage taxpayers to invest in local companies and receive a 100% tax deduction in the value of their investment. The investor, in return, receives a Section 12J tax certificate and venture capital shares, and the invested amount can be deducted from the tax- taxable income of that investor in the year at which the investment is made. So whether you're interested in setting up, looking for someone to finance or administer your venture capital company, cliffcentral.com has managed to discover a company called Grovest. They're quite well known. You can look them up. They can be your innovative Section 12J specialist, corporate advisory, and finance partner. And today we have Darren Folds in. He's a Meta Capital Fund Manager to discuss discuss the next generation of Section 12J. So Darren, welcome. It's nice to see you. Thanks, guys. Very nice to be here. Yeah, cool, man. And you're a chartered accountant. You joined Meta Capital in what, the first half of 2018? Yeah, that's correct. So I did a secondment over in San Francisco uh, f- off that's qualifying. A a, that's a good place to go and do some venture capital. Absol- absolutely. And I, I did give me a bit of an appetite and a bit of a, a lust for private equity venture capital. Obviously, completely different uh, scale over there. But uh, coming back to SA, I'm looking to find a very similar type uh, top role um, and section 12j is really private equity vc at a bit of a smaller scale so well, what makes this exciting is and you can correct me if i'm wrong sure. about this but apparently it's the fastest growing alternative investment class in south africa at the moment absolutely section 12J. No, it's it's it really is and, and even better so that it's a government incentive and a government initiative yeah because we do give government the gears absolutely. about how little they do for business but this is a, a good example of how not only do they they, they have an interest in um, giving you a tax benefit, but they also want to encourage the growth of local businesses. Absolutely, and I think, and look, any tax deduction is a way that government incentivizes behavior. And right. uh, so government here are, are incentivizing taxpayers to firstly keep their money onshore, and secondly redirect it into the heart of the economy, which is SMEs, and, and especially into sectors that have high growth uh, and high job creation. And that's kind of what the permissible trades are within Section 12J. So government really have put together a really comprehensive plan on how South African taxpayers can actually be part of the growth story uh, going out of this unfortunately long-term slump that we're in. So Darren, let's talk about that slump because there are certain barriers that exist and if you can overcome them, it could lead to another wave of investment capital flowing into Section 12J. What are those barriers? So I think there's two main barriers. One is the abundance of choice now that investors have in Section 12J. I mean, Mm. you're looking at close to 165 VCCs that you could invest into to obtain the tax break. So you as an investor into this uh, asset class are now, you know, could just be put off by the amount of choice that you have. Um, Secondly, is the affordability behind it. You know, the accessibility for a taxpayer to invest into these 12Js, they often carry minimums between 200,000 to 500,000, some even a million and above. So firstly, if you wanted to invest in one, it's it's an accessibility issue. And secondly, if Mm -hmm. you want to be diversified across the asset class, again, you need higher quantums of investment to feel that you're adequately diversified within the Section 12J space. So those are the two kind of barriers we've seen in the market. And I think Medicare Capital looks to overcome those to facilitate the next wave of capital. All right. What is the biggest misconception about Section 12J? Sure. I think the biggest mis- misconception is that it's strictly venture capital or an investment into strictly entrepreneurs. Um, so, you know, you kind of have that uh, VC headspace where if I make 10 investments, eight will go bust, two will be amazing. Here, venture, 12J has really moved towards private equity, small scale private equity uh, with some venture capital in it. So you really as an investor have that choice on what risk profile you want to take. Right. So I think it's often bucketed as a venture capital, high risk investment. Yeah. But I think where it's moved towards is, is very much traditional type investments into asset backed uh, investment strategies like brick and mortar assets in property, um, contractual assets in terms of renewable energy. So you're looking at mitigating a lot of your risk uh, through making an investment that you feel much more comfortable with and ones that you make uh, on a regular basis in the listed space. Um, 
how how does meta capital work and how is meta capital pioneering this next evolution sure. in in section 12 so we spoke yeah. about the two barriers being you know affordable diversification and how do i um limit my choice or how do i make the right investment decision with such a abundance of choice available meta capital is South Africa's first portfolio of 12j funds offering so what we do we an aggregated product it's vehicle. like an index exactly right like a, a mutual fund or aggregated product that you see in the listed space so you would invest into it hmm. satrix top 40 to give yourself diversification across the leading companies. And then you don't have to think about, oh my God, I've put all my money into, let's say, this hospitality business. Absolutely. And it might not be working. And then what happens to your investment? For sure. So on the on the barrier side of one, um, we make that decision for you. We have mm. a very... Uh, How often do you rebalance this fund? So because of the, the liquidity constraints with, with Section 12J, we pick a portfolio every year and mm. we ring fence it and raise money into it per, per tax year. So now, okay. for instance, this tax year, we've picked... Uh, uh, Six funds within our Meta Capital Monitorist Fund Three portfolio. We're taking it forward into the Feb 20 tax year. We'll raise money into it from the public uh, and through our approved distribution partners. Again, wealth managers who don't want to go do that process and rely on a multi manager system. Give me an example of the kind of stuff that gets into this portfolio. Sure. So currently we have uh, funds in the renewable energy space. So we have two funds out of the six in the renewable energy space. So it makes up close to 26, 28% of our portfolio. That's a nice area to be in. It's a fantastic area to be in. We have uh, strictly hospitality in the student accommodation space. So we partner with Westbrook Stack, uh, who Very form good. part of our portfolio. And another one is hospitality in the tourism space. We're involved in the development now in Rosebank with the Voco Hotel, which is a, a really well, well renowned brand and its first iterations being launched in South Africa in Rosebank and actually the 12J is the funding partner behind that as opposed to traditional bank finance Amazing. Um, so those are the kind of you know asset classes within our monitors fund and we call it monitors because we look at uh, building portfolios based on the most mitigated type investment vehicles that have asset backed that generate cash flows on the back of those assets for two things one it has a predictability side of it you know you can predict cash flows that are, are generated from assets and two it has a very clear pathway to liquidity you can sell an asset realize value and return capital into investors so if we look go back to the second question on the misconceptions of 12j a lot of people feel like there is no exit strategy involved so you invest and how do i actually get my capital out we think we pick strategies that have a very clear exit uh, liquidity profile which hopefully helps investors. Is there a limit to the time you can be in? So the only limitation uh, is that should you should hold your investment for five years to make okay. your tax deduction permanent. So if you sell right. your investment within the five years or sell those shares, it is liquid and it is permissible, but you would be liable for the recoupment of that tax deduction. Right. Okay, now there's this thing you guys talk about called uncorrelation, and there are mm. uncorrelation benefits to Section 12J. What are they, and what is uncorrelation to start with? Yeah, absolutely. So uncorrelation really in the investment space is saying, look, if I invest in one asset class as opposed to another or into both, how do they correlate to each other? So mm. if I invest into the listed equity space and into the private equity space, are they going to move at the same pace, at the same direction, etc.? So you know, moving into an alternative asset class, I think the big benefit has always been uncorrelation. Uh, if Trump tweets something about the US-China trade war, your listed portfolio might be impacted. So you're, you're saying it's like, for example, how gold is unrelated to what's going on in the stock market. For sure, absolutely. In fact, or it's cryptocurrencies and gold. Correct. Or, yeah, or crypto, a great example, is uncorrelated to most asset classes. Um, so, you know, we, if Trump treats something on the tra trade war, your listed pension fund on your portfolio might be impacted. But the renewable energy asset that's been built on this... Uh, unrelated. Exactly. Corporate industrial complex is completely unrelated. So that's the uncorrelation benefits that we try to explain to wealth managers who advise clients is that this can actually benefit them being uncorrelated to the market that they invest in. Well, yeah, then you're not tied to the vagaries of what goes on in politics or in currencies. Or absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And look, yeah. it, it has a place. Uh, you know, I think South African investors have always been primarily listed property, sorry, listed equities and property focused. I think it's the cultural beings of who we are. And I think we have a lot of scope to move into different asset classes. And when you understand the benefit especially of uncorrelation it makes that leap a bit easier all right finally what is the importance of diversifying your section 12j investments and when we say diversifying we're talking about 
some of it in hospitality, Absolutely. some of it in renewables, yeah. some of it in more more traditional areas. Absolutely. So I think I think diversity on two things. One, diversity across sectors within mm. the asset class, so as you mentioned there, and two, diversity across fund managers, which really are the jockeys yeah. behind. So you have diversity across not just the sector, but different fund managers who bring in different skill sets and different key personnel, et cetera. So you, you have a, a twofold diversity, and, and what's nice is Meta tries to uh, bring that through at an affordable basis. So we have a minimum of half a million rand, and you can have access to six funds and bypass their own minimum. So we're trying to make it more accessible for the greater market to be involved and also to have that diversity so they feel more comfortable that they adequately spread across the asset class. So we've done a little research on you and I found out that you're an avid golfer and you p- currently play off a one handicap. Is this true? It is true. It is true. I wish I could play a little bit more and try to get that. No, but uh, listen, I mean, are people going to come up to you on the golf course and ask you about Section 12J? In fact, they do. They do. I, do, I, I, kind, of, uh, I kind of wish it was the other way around and people in Section 12J asked about golf. <laughs> All right, well, you don't mind giving the free advice? Absolutely not. Yeah, no sure. ways. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank Meta you. Capital sounds very interesting. And I do encourage people to, very, at very least, do a little research around Section 12J, find out whether or not it's something for you. And in a, in a climate where people are trying to save on having to pay taxes, this is a great way to do it. If you believe in investing in the local economy and you want some solid returns, this is something to look at. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, well, thank, thank you very much you. for having us. Thank you very much. That's Darren Folds. Very nice to talk to you. And that is uh, the Section 12J discussion, which we're continuing with Grovest. And we'll have one or two more episodes of that, so stick around on cliffcentral.com for more.